Hey everybody, it is me. It's your old buddy Steve Simons and I'm coming back to you again today with another ad hoc awesomers.com podcast episode. And believe it or not, this is episode number 155. So the secret uh, message to you if you're trying to find links or show notes or whatever details we may discuss along the way is to go to awesomers.com slash 155 and you'll find any relevant show notes or details from today. Uh, and I would say, you know, we don't uh, have a lot of things that we put there, but what we do put there is probably worth taking a look. So go to awesomers.com slash 155. So I just want to give you guys kind of a little bit of an update of what I've been doing for the last few weeks. I don't believe I've dropped episodes for at least a couple weeks, uh, maybe more, because I've been traveling. I've actually been in um, London, Paris, uh, Rome, Barcelona, Cannes, Mallorca, uh, somewhere else, Florence, uh, all over Italy, and uh, and then, of course, Rome itself. Uh, we ended our trip there, and, and so we had a cruise around the Caribbean. I took my kids. We had some meetups in London and Paris, and those were fun. And we just had a great time. Uh, but this, you know, August in most of my time, I try to schedule August for like holiday time, vacation time, because that's when my kids have time off school. And and so that's what we did. So it was a really uh, epic trip. The kids had never been to Europe, so it was a nice chance for them to get over to Europe and, and get a flavor for each of those very distinct cities, right? If you go to London, you get a unique vibe, certainly compared to the the United States and what my kids have been largely exposed to. And then, of course, Paris is different yet again in its own way. And on to Barcelona, Rome, Cannes, wherever you think, they're all kind of different and unique in their own ways. So it's a really great experience. And it was time, um, you know, although I, I would ping and work a little bit um, with the, the various enterprises that I have going, I was not working what we would call full time. Uh, I definitely enjoy my time. But for anybody who's got teenagers, uh, my daughter's uh, 17, nearly 18. My son just turned 15. On the cruise ship, they kind of have their own things that they can do. So they were largely independent. And so I would split my time between goofing off and working and, and playing with the kids as the opportunities presented themselves. So that's kind of what I've been doing for the last few weeks. And it's uh, a, a rewarding time. And it's a, I'm thankful that I have that time. But of course, that means I don't... Uh, carry on my day-to-day -day activities, including trying to get podcasts up from time to time. So um, I, I don't know if this is one of those sorry or not sorry things. Uh, you know, I like to communicate uh, with sellers and I like to communicate with the awesomers out there as often as I can, but my time is the uh, clearly the most um, <laughs> precious and least uh, available resource that I have. And so I have to be very careful about uh, how I allocate it and how I spend it. And I, I encourage you guys to do the same, by the way. I want you to think about your time as the only thing that you can't buy more of, and it's always diminishing. It's always going away. So um, how you spend it, where you choose to spend it, the fact that you're spending it here with me right now on listening on a podcast or watching on the, the video versions uh, is extraordinarily gratifying to me. I really thank you for that energy and that effort you're putting in. It means a lot to me, and I hope that I don't waste your time. That's always my goal is to try to deliver on some ideas or some values that that are helpful to you at the end of the day. And, you know, people ask me, they, they say, you know, if you go to stevensimonson.com, so S-T-E-V-E-N, simonson.com, you'll find a series of projects that I'm working on. And I'm going to break a few of them down for you just very briefly to give you kind of an overview of how I look at things. So we have the Awesomers uh, brand. Um, that's that's what you're listening to now. You have the Awesomers podcast. We have the Awesomers website. We have the Awesomers um, Facebook group. And every bit of that is essentially free content. If you sign up on the Awesomers.com website and for that list, you'll get automatic uh, emails from time to time. There's a sequence that says, hey, uh, you know, have you thought about making your company story? Hey, have you found your personal why? Here's a free system or procedure to help you find that. So it's all about delivering free content in the Awesomers uh, brand, in the Awesomers world. And this is just my way of trying to give back to uh, an industry that's that's been very, very good to me. Uh, then we have kind of the Empowery e-commerce cooperative. Now, this is a co-op that we started. It's a nonprofit member-owned co-op. 
And I helped found it along with uh, my partner, Evan Hackle. And we put in kind of the, the legal structure and the ideas, and I'm, I'm supplying kind of all the money to get it going. Uh, but I don't run that day-to-day. -day. Melissa Simons and my sister runs that, and she's responsible for that operation. And so as new members join, uh, and by the way, I'm just a, a member like anybody else. I happen to be on the board as well. Um, but the, the point is, as a nonprofit e-commerce cooperative, it's a member-owned deal, and we try to respond to the, the members. So there's some pay that's required, but the best members will engage the services of Empowery, and they can actually earn enough cash back to make it a, uh, a revenue neutral situation for them. In fact, some of them actually can make money because they'll earn more cash back than the cost of the program. Why does it cost? Well, it costs because they're working day in, day out to find discounts and buying power and uh, make good decisions about influence, you know, whether it's with regards to Amazon policies or marketplaces in general or state policies. Uh, like sales tax or, you know, what's fair about, uh, you know, the bill of rights for, for Amazon sellers. It's, it's really, a co-op is designed to leverage the community, the buying power, the influence, and ultimately bring leverage and a voice to the sellers, right? If, if a lot of people use the phrase, well, it's kind of like a union. And it, it's kind of like a union, but in the Industrial Revolution time frame. So back in the Industrial Revolution, Unions were formed and actually served a very good purpose, um, which in my humble opinion, and I'm sure I'll get some hate mail on this, but I think that the unions now are uh, not as good and, and largely uh, just in there to wet their beaks and get themselves rich and exert political influence. Uh, in other words, they're not helping the workers day to day, they're helping themselves and helping their political agenda. But back, think back in the Industrial Revolution, for those of you who can remember it, I don't know who among us could. Uh, I may be old, but I ain't that old. Uh, but back then, you know, kids were working in factories and the, the hours were onerous and they wouldn't pay overtime. There's all kinds of just kind of uh, corporate corruption and, or, and even just say corporate hubris. Uh, let's not even call it corruption. That, where they could just say, it's our way or the highway. And we kind of have that as, as marketplace sellers. You know, I've pleaded and I've begged and I've, you know, tried to convince Amazon and, and many, many departments at Amazon that, you know, they should straighten some of their, their policies out. Um, and they're getting better. Incrementally, they're getting better, but they move just so slow. And, and what I'm, what my point about unions and, and so forth is if we all combine where we have one voice with Amazon and with Walmart and with eBay and all these other marketplaces, Empowery can show up and say, hey, here's what's important to us. We want you to take uh, care to, to work on these issues, whether it's things that are now coming to light uh, based on, I think, pressure, external pressure into Amazon. Like if you're suspended for a product or an account, maybe tell the reason why. Right. Instead of the old way, which is essentially requires a seller to go commit or go confess a bunch of sins, whether you committed them or not is secondary. Go confess a bunch of sins. And if you hit the right one, then maybe Amazon will let you back into their good graces and start selling that product or that account again. And that's in my mind, it's just unfair. I get why it evolved that way. It's just unfair. and It needs to be fixed. And I think Amazon's taking steps to fix it. Other things like hijacking. There's incremental steps forward, but it's not good enough. And I think that if the sellers have a voice by combining with Empowery um, and leveraging the other benefits like buying power and this and that, it really can be an effective force. Imagine, you know, your hundred of your closest friends all buying freight together. We're going to get a better deal. And imagine, you know, a hundred of your closest friends all saying, hey, let's go do this marketing, you know, this Facebook agency or this uh, chatbot software or this you know, click funnels or, you know, whatever it is, we can get a better deal if we do these things together. Um, and that's why Empowery is. So you got Awesomers that's 100% free. You got Empowery that has kind of a, um, a bronze and a silver level. Uh, and you can earn your way to gold, but there's some payment required because there's serious value being added. By the way, I think there's value in Awesomers. I just choose to give it away uh, for free. Uh, and then there's the high end version of my efforts, which is the Catalyst 88 Mastermind. And, you know, essentially that's run in different ways. In the past, we've run it as a quarterly mastermind, which is uh, 25 grand a year. And we have quarterly meetings and some online meetings in between. But 
as um, as significant as that effort is in terms of revenue, it is even more significant in terms of a drain on my time. So I actually paused that for 2019. And I don't know if I'll go back to the treadmill of meetings, maybe once a year, twice a year, I don't know, we'll see. But if I do, it's more likely to be um, trips like, hey, let's go to South Africa on a safari and at the same time we'll do a mastermind so that we can combine kind of fun lifestyle bucket list kind of items with fun uh, learning and masterminding. And so that's that's kind of the, you know, you start at Awesomers, then you move to Empower and then you evolve to Catalyst 88 if that makes sense. And everything I do, I try to deliver what I consider overwhelming value. You know, people should walk away and they should go, yes, I feel good about this and it was worth it. And I think that's largely been the case uh, up and down the, the equation. So that's that's kind of how I break up my time between free and then premium and then kind of ultra VIP. And that includes the, the Catalyst 88 trip to China that's happening in October. If you're not familiar with it, just go to LeeRonAndSteve.com. You can check that out. Now, I have other initiatives like KevinAndSteve.com. I'm an investor in Seller Chatbot. I'm an investor in Parsimony.com. Uh, and so there's a lot of things happening. I also have some brands and things like that, that, that we're operating. So there's a lot of things going on and I have teams of people who kind of look after and, and bear the brunt of the work. But I, I want to talk just a minute about parsimony today because Michael Pinkowski, my partner there was able to uh, cross some thresholds and some finish lines on some efforts that I think give a free look and there's a free product uh, available for people. So if you go to parsimony.com slash, well, just go to parsimony.com, click on products, and you'll see the free version that you can sign up for. And this is essentially a like a listing and review alert system. So anything on your listing that changes, um, whether it's the, the copy of the listing, the image, uh, bestseller ranking, losing the buy box, all of that stuff, there's a free listing and alert process that will that you can sign up for. And again, I can't emphasize enough the price starting at free for 20 ASINs. Uh, I don't know how long the 20 ASINs will last. We may lower that if the, the tax on the system is too high, but we want to deliver something that is for free uh, to the community uh, as, a, as a starting process, right? It's a freemium model. So show the value and get people to understand where the value is. And then as they grow, they can take advantage. Now, so, what is an alert system? Why do we care? Because there's a, a, alerts available from a lot of different places, and many of those will deliver wonderful results. What makes Parsimony a little different is that it's actually a full ERP system. Uh, but we're, instead of kind of unveiling the whole thing to you at once and giving you the, the whole Monty, so to speak, we're going to break it off into little bite-sized chunks. Frankly, the only reason we haven't commercialized and allowed people to sign up for parsimony, the full system yet, is we don't think people are ready to use it. Largely in the the e-commerce space, especially Amazon sellers, a lot of these folks, a lot of you folks, you listening right now, have difficulty getting your QuickBooks or your zero under control. And by the way, if you don't have monthly financials coming out like the 10th or 15th of every month, you should contact Empowery. Go to empowery.com slash contact right now. And they'll refer you to a couple resources. You don't have to pay for that referral. It's just like, here's who can solve that problem. And if you're in the QuickBooks camp, they'll send you one way. If you're in the zero camp, they'll send you another way. And you can solve that problem right now for not so much money and with highly qualified help. So that's, that's a solution that is, can be brought to bear. And my point is, if people can't run those simple pieces of software, it will be very difficult for them to run an enterprise level piece of software. So instead of open the whole kimono at once, we're going to just break it off into bite-sized chunks. So this listing review um, stuff and, and you know, it downloads your reviews um, and tracks where you are, it'll send you notifications, for example. So, hey, you want to get an email? Fine. You want to get it on Slack? That's fine, too. And the premium version, you can also have it text you. The premium version also will do more frequent updates every 15 minutes, I believe, and also... Um, unlimited archives. One of the best things I think about the, the program is, you know, Amazon, I, God bless you, I love you, but, you know, when I had a bunch of uh, reviews wiped out, Amazon's response was, uh, tell us which reviews you lost and we'll research it. And it's like, well, 
you don't let me scrape the stuff. It's against the terms of service to scrape. So how am I supposed to tell you? So I, I'm just telling people out there, we're, we're going to scrape um, for archival purposes the data that we need to preserve our position. Also, when a listing change happens, we need to be able to prove what it looked like before. And whether it was a hijack or Amazon or some other system anomaly, we need to show exactly what it looked like. So having a picture of the page, like a, a PNG picture, um, it'll capture that image every single day, and it'll capture the raw HTML, and it'll also capture as a visual and HTML page one of your reviews. So you can really see that the history of the most important things that are happening. Uh, but one thing that makes Parsimony a little bit unique is that we have project management and task management built into the system. So think about, you know, in the next couple months as we release workflows, you'll be able to get the, the alert, hey, this happened. And if you have turned on the workflow, it, you could automatically say, well, what do I do if I lost the buy box? What's my, my project and what are the tasks associated with that project? And you can even assign it to team members. Uh, one of the things, again, that makes Parsimony unique is you can have unlimited MWS accounts. You can have unlimited users as well. And that makes the power for you as the manager really, really robust. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Parsimony, some of the features here. But then I want to talk very, very candidly about our entrepreneurial leadership styles. And you're not going to want to miss it. So please uh, hang in here with me while I go through a couple more of these things. In the parsimony system, you are able then to uh, track and monitor you know, what, what your standings are. And I believe in the free version, it's every half an hour. And it will, it will hold the archives for 90 days. And then it will just start rewriting, uh, overwriting. So uh, you can't keep that data endlessly for free. Obviously, that costs us money. There's actual dollars and cents being transacted for free accounts. It costs us money because we spin up your own server. You, you actually, nobody else has access to your server. It's got its own database, so there's nobody who's sharing your database. No cross-mogination of data is possible, uh, as well as having your own archives and, and subdirectories and so forth. So it's actually a very sophisticated process versus just having one shared database. Um, and this is for security. This is for redundancy. It's for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of engineering behind it. And even though that may not sound sexy to you if you don't understand it, let me just say, as you decide to grow, or maybe the growth happens whether you decide it or not, the, the system will be able to grow with you. So things that uh, will be coming out, as I mentioned, workflows will be coming out. So you say, hey, I lost the buy box. Um, who's who's going to get that workflow? Maybe you have different uh, people for different languages that you need to assign you know, reviews to or you know, whatever the case is. All of those things will be able to be systemic. And as I always say, you know, version 1 ain't perfect. Version 1.1 is a little better. By the time you look at version 2, version 1 is an embarrassment. And so that's kind of the incremental progress that will be made. But all this stuff's already built in. There is massive, massive capabilities built into Parsimony. And we're just going to reveal just a little at a time and see if you guys care, see if you like it, see if it's valuable to you. And again, that's why we do free stuff. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, we hope that that thing can make money. Otherwise, uh, paying for servers and, and for development and all that stuff, uh, won't happen long term. So that's, what's happening at Parsimony. I want you to go check that out right now, parsimony.com and just get a sense of it. And you know, it's free. Why not uh, take a look at it and figure out how it works for you and then be, be on the lookout because these workflows are going to be a huge game changer for you. Because imagine that, you know, you say, hey, listen, um, somebody upvoted, you know, one of my negative reviews. Maybe you need to file a case with Amazon or, you know, you have some procedure. You'll be able to set your own SOPs, but we'll probably have some pre-built workflows that you can just plug in. You can assign these. There's even time tracking built in and a team calendar and other things that are very, very robust. So this is our way of slowly exposing you to ERP without uh, overwhelming you. So I hope you understand that premise and I hope that you appreciate the efforts that, gone in, that have gone into it. So go to parsimony.com and check out the free, uh, the parsimony free version is what it's called. And you'll, I think, be happy with the robust capabilities that cost you nothing.
So that's pretty hard to beat. All right, so I talked earlier about this idea of leadership and the entrepreneurial defect. <laughs> uh, at least that's how I think of it. Entrepreneurs lack patience in general. We most often, most of us lack patience. Um, we're we're good leaders in a way of having vision, and this is where we're going, and even rallying the troops and getting people excited. But we're often terrible managers, and we're not great managers because we lack patience, and we also lack the, in general, we lack the um, the will to do detail work. Uh, I'm speak before myself. I don't like the details. I get the details. I'm I'm a skilled operator, but I don't like them. And that's certainly not what I would consider my strength. And so my point to you is if you are like me and impatient and you don't like the details, we can mistreat our people. We I think people treat freelancers like they're their tissue paper. You just pull a tissue out and if that one doesn't work, you know, after you blew your nose into it, you just discard it instead of creating a system and a, a teamwork and, and basically a, a welcome place for people to work. Because many times we just go, hey, if they can't cut it, it's it's on them, it's not on me. Or um, I saw a discussion board the other day, they're like, hey, you know, when you have a, a VA quit on you, you have a, somebody quit on you, you know, is it you or is it them? And all the entrepreneurs pile on, oh, it's them. If they can't see the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we're all we're in an echo chamber, so we're all agreeing with, oh, yes, of course, it's always them. And I, I, I'll just tell you, it's not them, it's us. Uh, if we're not good leaders, if we don't present opportunity, if we don't present them a chance to grow and see how the whole thing fits together, we're going to have a dysfunctional team, and it's going to be hard to maintain you know, long-term people, which is terrible for us. Every time we have to train somebody new or bring them up to speed, it's just terrible. Um, if you actually quantify how much work you put into training somebody and then losing them and training somebody else, the costs are staggering. You would, it, I really, you know, there are studies out there where they've done this work, but if you just do it for yourself, for your last three or four hires, especially the ones that didn't work out and how you had to replace them, you will be absolutely gobsmacked, uh, to, to coin a phrase, with the costs and the time and the delays and the headaches that went along with it, when it would be better to hire right to begin with, right? So doing the right job hiring and then doing the right job with support systems and uh, and feedback loops, which is all management stuff, which entrepreneurs generally hate to do. And we all think we're going to hack our way and somehow outsmart the system, right? There's There's not one entrepreneur out here, especially the younger entrepreneurs, and I'm not speaking of age, but experience level, less experienced entrepreneurs are like, you know what, I know that, you know, Steve's talking about this, but it doesn't apply to me because I'm just going to hack my way and I found this good person. I'm going to just ride that horse, you know, until I break it. And it'll work for a while, but it won't work forever. And what I want people to really consider is what does it take to be a good leader? What do you have to do to train yourself to break some habits to force yourself to engage as a as a proper manager and as somebody who can be supportive of the team and and take care of the team because when you do that that's the empowerment that that they will come back to you and the results will be staggering i've seen it happen uh, sometimes on purpose sometimes by accident and i've made many mistakes along the way but where the team produces results that were absolutely unexpected and unprecedented because they had the tools, the resources, and the support they needed. And I say this today because I, I just want to reiterate that, you know, for as awesome as entrepreneurs are, we have some built-in wiring. Again, I call it a defect. And we have to just acknowledge that we need help to overcome some of these um, obstacles that we face. It's really not a defect. It's just a wiring issue. And we, you know, we have to strengthen some of these things. Now, I'm, I'm a big believer in focusing on your strengths. So I don't like to be a manager. Um, it's, I will only want to manage one or two people, maybe three people in a company, and then have them manage everybody else. How you choose to deal with it is, is up to you. But I would rather pay for layers of management than me getting stuck into the day-to-day -day minutia. That's one of my methods of, of solving that. And that's why 
org charts and responsibility flows and things like that are, are very critical to an organization as you grow. So uh, anyway, let me summarize what we've talked about. I talked a little bit about why I have Awesomers, Empower It, and Catalyst on my agenda. Uh, I talked a little bit about the parsimony free, um, and I talked a little bit about leadership, and and I'm, I'm telling you as fellow Awesomers and entrepreneurs to be careful how you think of your, your team. If you think of them as disposable tissue paper, that's all they'll be, and it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. But if you really think of them as foundation blocks for your company, for your vision, for your dreams, then you can build a castle on top of that foundation. And, and they'll be thrilled to watch the growth and see the opportunities for themselves and others. They, they will love the ride. They'll, they'll uh, think that it's the best thing ever, but they've got to see that vision. They've got to be part of the team. And I think having systems, I think having um, meetings, uh, believe it or not, you know, you should have at least one meeting uh, for a team once a week that all the team members go to. You talk about, you know, progress and, and various things. And, and probably a one-on-one -on -one meeting with each of your direct reports once a week. And same with any of your supervisors downstream. If they have direct reports, they should have one-on-one -on -one meetings as well. And just get the pulse of the people and make sure that projects are moving on and, and everybody's making um, incremental steps forward towards your, your vision and your goals. So anyway, that's my little rant on leadership today. We'll talk more about that. Um, you can go to Go Be Strong, by the way. Uh, they uh, have some, some great training on strengths-based leadership that can help you become a better manager. I think first you got to know yourself as a manager. I know my strengths, and they're extraordinary strengths. So there's dark sides to each strength, but I'm, I'm lucky to have them. And the more I focus on them, the better I do. And the strengths that I don't have, which, again, won't surprise you, like I don't like the detail stuff, I got to find really great people to do that, deal with that stuff. And so people like Megan and Sherry and – you know, Jessica and Viola and William and Alex and, you know, Melissa and Spencer and so many others involved in the organization. I'm, I'm going to stop naming because I'll forget people. Um, they handle, you know, some of the heavy lifting and things they're really good at and they like to do it. Uh, Sherry's my uh, easy example because we've worked together for plus or minus 20 years on and off, but she loves spreadsheets. She loves forecasting and she loves merchandising and ordering and, and things like that, all that stuff that my eyes instantly glaze over. I hate that stuff. And she loves it. So she gets high fulfillment from it and I get high, you know, um, nightmares from it. And so it's the perfect mix because she gets to do what she loves. I value what she does and everybody's happy because the results um, work out. So that's, that's what you guys have to find is you have to find somebody for each critical position. And in this modern world we live in, you don't need full-time people. You can hire, you know, uh, a freelance person that will do, you know, five hours a week on this, you know, specific task to their specialty, 10 hours a week here or there. And you can bolt on these things with teammates around the world, but treat them as a team. Stop treating them as, as kind of just, you know, little distant, uh, I don't know, siloed people. Think of them as a team and try to bring that team together. Uh, and, and I think you'll find good results with that. So. Uh, anyway, we'll talk more in the future about some of these topics, but I'm going to stop here. Uh, I miss talking to you guys, and I hope that you guys find these valuable. If you do, go leave us a review for goodness sake. And, and I'm not too uh, proud to beg. Uh, five stars is, is plenty. Uh, go on to Apple iTunes or wherever your favorite is. Apple gets us some good traction. And leave us a five-star review and be effusive because uh, Steve's got – uh, <laughs> got every reason in the world to read those reviews and be happy when I see them. And by the way, if you want to give me a one star and kick me in the the uh, tenders and tell me why I suck, I'm open to that too. Although I will have to cry in the shower for about a half an hour after each negative review. So use them wisely. Um, I appreciate you guys out there. Thank you for listening. Um, this is awesomers.com slash 155. So episode number 155. Go check it out now. I'll put some of these links on the page, but uh, I've given you clear instructions within this podcast. So please go get on the job and uh, check out Parsimony, check out Empowery Catalyst, uh, whatever you need to do. And uh, don't forget the LeeRonAndSteve.com. We're going to close that out pretty soon on China and KevinAndSteve.com. We've got really great beta results. It's extraordinary. We're not doing the full reveal on it yet, but if you're not in the, in the loop, 
you should get there. Uh, we'll talk again, everybody. Thanks, and bye for now.